Okay, so tonight's uh, webinar is uh, basically one of a series of coach ed education webinars that we're doing, and um, we've one more left. This is our second last webinar. We've done lessons learned from the LGFA coach analysis. We've done demands of our game. What does the research say? And some really good stuff in those two webinars in terms of that might influence how you coach and your coaching behavior. We did cultivating a coach's community practice in a voluntary sport session. That was our, our last webinar. And we've one coming up on the unconscious bias in coaching. Really good um, um, uh, webinar uh, focused on the unconscious bias. We have Dr. Irene Hogan that will be helping us with delivering that session. And all those webinars are available on our LJFA YouTube channel. Just go under the coach education playlist and they're all there for you to view at your own time. And if you have any thoughts on how, the, on how you uh, find the webinars, please and make contact with us because we love to hear feedback and we always want to improve and develop as well. So there's a lot there, Garrod, in there really uh, for people to uh, look over over the coming weeks. You're nodding, so I'll take that, <laughs> take that as a possible. Um, okay. So tonight's topic is the Gaelic Games Player Pathway. Um, and we're really looking forward to this topic. We'll try, as I said, keep it as simple as possible so that you, you and your own, uh, your own context, your own club can uh, probably relate to what we're trying to achieve. And, and hopefully we, we can take it from there. So just that you know, there's a lot of topics actually that are very, I suppose, that are aligned to the, the player pathway. And the player pathway is probably one of the, the coaching topics that you will be having with your coaches in your club. So it's probably one aspect of a bigger picture that's going on in your club, really, from a coaching perspective. So please, guys, on our LJFA YouTube channel, under the Coach Education Playlist, we have a lot of webinars there that you could possibly go back and look over. So creating a positive coaching environment, uh, being an inclusive coach, how to plan, lay out, um, deliver and review a coaching session and cultivating a coach's community practice in a voluntary sports session. So there's good webinars that are already there that would possibly align to what we're trying to achieve tonight. So the, the player pathway is one aspect of the bigger picture from a coaching point of view in your club. So I would advocate strongly that over the coming days, we get, get time to link in with these webinars. And it all makes sense because it all ties in together. And I think, Gerald, it would be important to probably that there, there is more than going on in, uh, in, in a coaching context in a club than just the player pathway. But it doesn't yeah, absolutely. And there's individual, you know, there's different uh, clubs have different challenges. So that's why we're so lucky to have so much of these informative webinars that we've built up now over the last few years. And so... If you have more questions after this evening or just certain areas that kind of spark your interest, then definitely take a look first towards that LGFA YouTube channel and there should be a lot more information to help you as well. Brilliant. So tonight, think and reflect, hopefully, you know, think and reflect. We, we just present information to you and I suppose you take what you need to take from it and hopefully it'll just get you thinking and reflecting your own coaching practice. And hopefully uh, after tonight, something you can take away and possibly assist you in what you're trying to do in your clubs. Okay, so tonight we're going to try, what are we going to try to achieve in our outcome is to provide an overview of the Gaelic Games pathway, but more importantly, I suppose, to demonstrate how can you apply the Gaelic Games player pathway in your club. So, you know, that's something that we're going to try to achieve tonight. How is, can we take what we know and apply it into our own context in our own clubs? Before I start, I'm going to do a quick poll, uh, if you don't mind, and I'm going to launch the poll now. And I just have to, I'd like to have an idea of, you know, does your club have a player pathway specific to your, to your club. So does your club have a player pathway specific to your club? So please guys, just, just click in there. It's just nice to know who we have in the room and what we have. And also it'd be just for, for us to form going forward. So it's a nice balance. Um, the majority actually, at the moment, there are a quarter of people in the room um, uh, have a player pathway in their club. And so that's interesting. Uh, Garoda, into to start, the uh, quarter in the room, either are aware they have a player pathway or have a player pathway in their club. So that's interesting start, isn't it? Yeah, that's a very good sign. Very, very good sign. So hopefully tonight now, everyone, we give you a few uh, little tips and ideas on how you can probably look in, uh, at probably implementing uh, a player pathway in your club or give you ideas on where to start anyway. Okay. Right, let's get the show on the road. 
So the Gaelic Games Clare Pathway, and what we'll do is we'll put a link into the, the chat at the end of the webinar for you to probably you know, view a bit more over the coming days. There is a link whereby it goes through in detail about the Clare Pathway if you want to read up on it a bit more. But last year we launched uh, the Gaelic Games Clare Pathway, whereby it encompasses the, the three associations, the GA, the Ladies Football and the Camogie Association. So now we have a Clare Pathway that encompasses across the, the, the three, um, shall I say, associations. And it looks at, you know, like the club, the talent phase and the elite phase. So it kind of gives an idea of what is it we're kind of looking for. If we want to improve and develop our players and to move through the pathway and through the phases, what are the key things we need to be looking for? Or developing as coaches in order to, to, to ensure that they reach their potential and be the best they can be. So as I said, we will put the link into the chat function at the end so you can do copy and paste and you can give it a little, read a book more about this after tonight. But essentially, what is a player pathway? And that's probably what you're thinking. What is it? Simply what it is, it's to ensure every player has an opportunity to participate and be involved in our games. How can we create an environment whereby any player who wants to come down to your club can has an opportunity to participate and become involved? And I suppose for us as coaches, it helps us, it guides us in terms of just being aware of the state of development that your players are at. So if you're down the eights, you're on the twelves, on the sixteens, the minor, the adults, you're just aware of the stage that they're at in their journey, but also the percentage stage that they can reach and how can you assist them to achieve that. But even more so, the player pathway really helps that. It just gets you to think and reflect about the level of training that needs to be provided for your age group appropriate to the development stage of your players. So if you're with the under eights, well, what does that look like? What, you know, if you want to develop those players, what does that look like? So it's appropriate to the age uh, of, and stage of development of your players. If you're under 16s, then that could look a small bit different. So at the end of the day, the, the player pathway, it's all about the, the club. The club is core, developing players at the club level. It's about the players. And it's all about how can we create quality coaching experiences and developing those connections with our players. It's about being inclusive and it's about keeping as many players involved as long as possible. And I'm going back to the point I made earlier on about those webinars that we've already done. It has hit all those topics um, all the time on a consistent basis. So we're continually thinking about player-centered, quality coaching experiences, developing a connection, keeping players involved, and keeping them involved for as long as possible. I suppose, Gerard, it's as simple as that, really. I think we're all trying to change, uh, I suppose, achieve the same thing, really, aren't we? Yeah, and it is a fantastic guide. I think the main thing as well is how you marry both philosophies, the Gaelic Games player pathway philosophy with your own club's philosophy. And does that differ at the moment, or does it look very similar? If so, if it looks very similar, then you're on the right path. Yeah, and every club is different. In terms of, and we come to that in a few minutes. In terms of where, what is it you want to achieve as a club? Are you clear on what are you about as a club and what is it you're trying to achieve? So the Gaelic Game Pathway has three strengths, and I'm going to summarize this in a nutshell for you. Okay, it's basically about how can we create a real positive environment so that we can develop our players through the game. Simple. So how, and and that environment includes you as a coach your club, teachers, schools, okay, the games program. And how do we develop players? So how can we develop players and improve them so that they're passionate about the game, they're being respectful, they're committed, they're creative, they're resilient. How do we develop players to achieve all those attributes? But we'll do it through the game and those key coaching principles about that they come, they enjoy what they do, that they're challenged, that it's player-centered, that everybody's involved, it gives an opportunity for everybody involved, looks like the game, there's constant decision-making going on. So in a nutshell, what we're trying to do through the Gaelic Games player pathway is create the environment that develops the player through the game. Simple, in a nutshell. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And there's three phases within that. So tonight, the majority of us tonight would be in that uh, foundation phase, would be in the, 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 the F model. So we're all in part and possibly involved with the club. That. So if you're F1, you're probably involved with the under sixes up to under eights. If you're F2, you're probably involved with the under nines up to under elevens. If you're F3, you're involved with the under twelves all the way up to adulthood. So that's where the club is core, that foundation phase. That's probably all of us tonight that are involved in the club and coaching players in the club. 
Then you have players who are outside of that club. So they're probably involved in the player development program if you're talking about ladies football. It could be development squads if you're talking about the GA and Camogie. So as you're looking at the talent phase, it could be their, your under 14 teams, your under 16 inter county teams. It could be your minor inter county teams. It could be your third level colleges. And um, so the, all those talent phase, and then you have the elite phase, which is your adult inter county phase. So the player pathway looks at three phases. But for us tonight, we're going really after that foundation phase. We're going after that club phase. How do we develop players from under eight all the way up to adult level? That's what we're, what we're going to achieve tonight. So there's four key pillars. So under these sub phases, there's four key pillars that we need to observe. There are the technical aspects of our players, the tactical aspects of our players, the physical aspect, and the psychosocial aspect. So for example, you're going to technical is develop the skills. Catchy, kicky, walking off left, walking off right. Tactical is movement, awareness of space. Physical is movement quality, change in direction, endurance, aerobic speed, whatever it may be. And then psychosocial is that connection. How do we connect with the coach and how do we connect with players? So they're the key four pillars. So think about this now tonight and your age group they're involved with. If you're planning a session, Tomorrow night for the under eights, if you're planning a session tomorrow night for the minors, always think about these four key pillars. How can I improve and develop our players? How can I challenge our players around these four key pillars? Technically, tactically, physical, and psychosocial. So thinking about that. So go back to our planning, the layout, deliver, and review coaching session. This will be forefront to that. So if you want to learn more how you do that in a, in a micro level, go back to that webinar, really focuses on this. But I don't mind in the, in the chat function, you're planning a session tomorrow for your under eight. So you're planning a session tomorrow for your minors in your club. What area do we, you feel we probably just don't pay much attention to or should pay more attention to? What do you think it should be? And Garod, I suppose it's important that, you know, we do think about these four areas. So in the chat function, put in the number. If you think it's two, put two. If you think it's physical, put three. What area do you feel as coaches we probably need to put a bit more thought into? And Garod, I suppose it's important when we are planning, that we do encompass these four key areas. Yeah, what we tend traditionally tend to do is we as coaches, we lean towards our strengths. And that's what it's a, okay, I'm very good tactically. I'm going to do that because I look great as a coach tactically. But it is kind of can be uncomfortable for coaches, teams of coaches to actually sit down and address all of these different areas because these four key pillars will really aid the progression of your teams, of your players. Yeah. So it's not in just one direction in all those four main areas. So it's very interesting, actually, just looking at the chat. A it lot like psychosocial, don't you get old? The one yeah, four is coming in a lot, and then some twos as well. So right. tactical, maybe a small bit more so. Yeah. Right. And it's very interesting, maybe that kind of identifies the areas now, already this evening, that you might want to lean in towards or work on a small bit more in your sessions. Maybe there need to be a bit more discussions with your fellow coach or your club about that area. And that's a very good point you make, Errol, that we do possibly tend to train players where we feel we're strong, the technical, tactical, physical. We do. And in LGFA, our research shows that the psychosocial is the area we need to put a bit more thought into if we want to involve, engage, and go back to the Being Inclusive webinar, it really goes after that section. So if you want to a bit more about that, learn a bit more, go back to the Being Inclusive webinar, how to cater for players of all ability levels, then it really gives you nice ideas on how to develop that. But yeah, so well done, everyone. So but what we're saying to you tonight is, let's go back. We, we know that the player pathway is focusing on, you know, the, the environment that we're trying to create. We're all here to try and create a good environment to develop the player through games, okay? We do know we're all involved with the club from under eight all the way to adult. How can we develop our players to be the best they can be and reach their potential across all these age cohorts? And bear in mind their stage of development. But when we're thinking about developing the player, we need to include the four pillars. Every time you plan a session, you think about developing players, you have to think about the four pillars. You can't leave one out because they won't reach their potential. They might, you know, obviously do well, but can they reach their best or be their best or reach their potential if we leave one out? So just think about that at the moment. Okay. Hopefully this is all making sense. We're trying to set the scene. 
The LGP have a competency chart. I don't know, in the chat function, have you ever seen this before? Uh, please say yes or no, or if you have, have you used it in your club? Is it up in your, in your uh, uh, walls or whatever it may be? I suppose it's called a competency chart. And basically, if you look at here, and, I, and I'll show you a, a section in a minute, from under sixes all the way up to ad level. Well, what is it we want to achieve with those players, you know, throughout those age groups? So at under eights, what is it we want to achieve in our club under the four key pillars? You know, what are we trying to develop the players to do across these four pillars and all up to ad level? But bear in mind, this is just a guide. It's a guide. And in my opinion, in your clubs, it's something that should evolve through coaching conversations on a regular basis. So it's a guide that influences, uh, I suppose, how you approach your training uh, throughout the year with the age group that you're involved with. You need to have some idea in your mind, what is it by the end of the year that my club would like me to be able to achieve with our players? So what are the expectations of me from the club? And here's a guide that gives you that idea. And it also helps you with the coaching competencies. But let's break it down. So let's let's give a look at, I, I took out one section of it because it's very hard to read it there. So if you look at the under nine to left, for example, you know, technical. So in our club, we all sat down, all the under nine coaches or the under, all the under tens and under 11 coaches sat down and said, think about this now, what is we want to achieve? So technically we want them to catch, we want them to solo off both sides and we want them to hook, whatever it may be. Tactically, we want them to know the basic rules of goal games. We want them to, to have basic idea of support play. Physical, we want them to have, to have agility, balance, coordination. We want them to uh, introduce them to flexibility, mobility. I'm just picking out a few examples. Psychosocial, the mental aspect, we want to build connection and a positive attitude to sport. Lifestyle, taught the value of being in team and promote um, practicing skills at home. So here now we have, if I'm a coach who's coaching the under nines, tens or elevens, I have now an idea of what my role is as a coach in terms of developing the players. So under technical, tactical, uh, physical and psychosocial. Now, what I do with that is, I now think about those things. So when I'm planning my sessions, I'll relate back to that as a guide. Well, what is it I want to cover? Well, by the end of the year, I hopefully will touch on a lot of these so that when they move up the age group, they now will advance on those things. So we're hoping that by the end of the year, they'll have, I suppose, mastered these things. So that when they move up to the under 13s, 14s, 15s, now they'll be going to a different level on each of those four pillars. But look at the coaching style required for that. So what kind of coach are we looking for in that age group? We're looking for one that's an emphasis on skill and development, uh, looking for feedback, looking at observing, coach the commentator during games, begins with small friendship and groups, invasion games. So it gives a kind of guideline to the coach. I suppose, Garod, I don't know what's coming through the chat, but I hope it's just giving them a kind of an idea. So the competency chart is there, and it's something that it breaks down the four pillars for each of the, shall I say, strands uh, or the age groups that are involved, right from under sixes up to adult. It's a guide and it influences in terms of how you coach and your behavior. Garoud, is there anything coming through or is anything you'd like to say on that point? Um, it's interesting, yeah, in the chat, it's actually kind of pretty 50-50 between yes and no of who is aware of it or even utilizing it. And a few people have mentioned that they've they circulated at different stages throughout the year within their club already as well. So that's very interesting. But it's kind of 50-50 now whether people use this as a basis for their player pathway as well. Brilliant. So I'm a coach coming in, I'm a new coach, and I always ask the question, what is it you want me to do with this age group? What are the minimum you'd like me to achieve for this age group? Here's a guide. Come in, here's a guide. Let's provide a guide. No, oh, thank you very much. Now at least I know what is it I, I need to achieve as a coach in order to develop the players to be the best they can be. And if everybody, if all your coaches are singing off the same hymn sheet, then wow, look at the powerful outcome we could have is this, okay? And, and look at the connection that we could have. Okay, I'm, I'm sure you're saying to me, William, that's great, but come on, how do I start this in my club tomorrow? Or if you do have a knowledge of your player pathway, how do we ensure it's front and center of what we do as coaches in every day? So let's go through those little steps now. And if you have any questions or queries, please throw me the chat function and we'd be happy to try and answer where we can. So, okay, let's go. I asked the question, some, and we, we kind of answered this, some have yes, 
But if you don't mind the chat function, if you have yes, okay, how do you communicate to your club, coaches, parents, and players? So if you is it yes, is it in the, is it just that you see it going into the dressing room and you see it on a post on the wall, or is that distributed to all coaches, parents, and players? How is that communicated to them? Is it that you're here? Here's our player pathway for the year, and people have it. Do you discuss it? You know, how do you ensure that it's in front and center of your coaching conversations in your club? So is it discussed regularly by your coaches in your club? Think about this now. So yes, you know it's there, but how much is it? Is it in your coaching conversations? How often do you discuss it? How often do you review it? Do you know, oh, look, I tried this this year. I don't think that's right for that age group. I think that should go down in another age group. Or yeah, I found that really beneficial. I think we should add this to this section, whatever it may be, some from your experiences. And if it's no, if you don't know much about the player that way, do you think it's something that your club needs to consider? So again, in the chat function, share your thoughts. And I suppose, Garod, everybody here tonight is at a different stage of development. Their club is in a different stage of development. They're in a different, I suppose, journey in terms of their coaching their clubs. Some clubs are really advanced in their structures. Some are just really trying to get them going and started. But this is one conversation that I think coaches would get maximum benefit out if they really bring it to the forefront of their of their of their thought process. Yeah, absolutely, and it's uh, it's interesting to see because yes, we know there's a lot of these posters put up and individuals with great intentions in clubs, but we are not sure. And this is what we want to provoke that question this evening. Is everyone listening? Are people adhering to it? Are they falling in under what you're hoping to achieve within your club? Interesting to see in the comments as well. Um, some people said no, but they will consider it. It's something they want to start implementing, they, especially this year. We should, uh, should start to implement not in a, enough internal consistency between age groups, but will be addressed. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to highlight this evening as well. Exactly, exactly. How do we get more consistency across the board in terms of how we, our coaching approach and behavior across the board? Are you working in isolation at the moment? Are we looking at their own corner? But you know what? There's no consistency in terms of what we're trying to achieve with players. So I look after the 11s this year. I do my own thing, but who's, I won't have them next year. So it doesn't really bother me. Or is there communication going on? What is it we're trying to achieve so that players are continually de developing and improving? Uncertainty lives to, le leads to inconsistency. Inconsistency leads to chaotic behavior. So let's try to probably minimize that uncertainty around these areas. Okay, we're going to give you a few tips and ideas on how to go about this, or even, as I said, if you have it in place, how can you bring it to the forefront of your coaching conversations? This is very simplistic in nature. I hope it's not too simplistic, uh, but please do, guys, if you have any questions, just throw them into the chat. Okay, so how do we apply this in your club? Let's go. Let's start from the very start. So if after tonight, just think about what you do presently. Just think about it. Okay, we have a player pathway, but it's not to the forefront. Right. We don't even have a player pathway. So we have to start the conversation here. So we would advocate or encourage, right, get all coaches in the room. So when you have all your coaches gathered for the year, under eights, sixes, tens, twelves, fourteens, sixteens, adults, minors, adults, the whole lot, we would advocate or encourage get everybody in the room. And then sometimes that could be the role of the coach club coaching officer. And just to let you know, we will have a, a webinar on that coming up over the coming weeks as well to outline the role. So get all your coaches in the room. Come on in, have a cup of tea, biscuits, whatever. You know, have a fanfare, whatever you want to do. And it's just assess where you are. Just assess where you are. Where are we as a group? Where are we in terms of developing our players? And you can have the, the, the poster there if you want. Where are we at? Just even that simple question. What are we doing well? What can we improve on? Okay, and start or revisit the conversation around the player pathway. So where are we at currently? What are we doing well? What can we improve on? And you know, in terms of the player pathway, and look at the guideline there from the NGFA with the competency chart, where are we in that, in that space? And just have a conversation around that. You probably have a situation where, oh yeah, we're really clear on what we want to achieve in each age group under each pillar, or yeah, that's great, but what do we want to do in our own club context? Is what we want to achieve 
you know, is it mirroring that or do we need to probably think about our own and maybe just refine it to make it very applicable to our own club? So I suppose, Gerard, the first bit of advice is if you feel the conversation needs to start or revisit, just get people in the room and start having a general conversation around this space about the player pathway, really, you know? Yeah, I think it's very important. There's a few long-term positive effects of this as well, that if you do something in this way, basically you're giving more club members uh, the opportunity for input so they feel more valued straight away. That's a great opportunity. Next, then uh, you'll have a more informed player pathway. And also when you have those coaches in the room, if anyone sways or diverts from their player pathway down the line, you can reference back to this meeting where you everyone had the opportunity for their input. So I think that's very important to have clarity with you, your coaches, and what you're looking to achieve in the long term. And I would say, it's the lead coaching officer, it's the club that take ownership here and, and, and set this up for your coaches. Because as coaches, they need to know what's expected of them. If we don't give them guidance and support, then that's where things could go a small bit helter-skelter during the year. So coaches need to be aware of what's expected of me and, what, and vice versa, what's expected of the club. What's expected of me? I need to give you guidance and support. So I, this is what we expect of you, but we're going to guide you and support you by just giving you a bit of direction in terms of what is you need to be achieving at each age group. I hope we're not losing people yet. Anyway. Okay, so that's the first thing. Think about where you are presently. Just think about that. Okay, let's go to plan. Right. Okay, so how do you achieve this? You need to have clarity around your club coaching philosophy. If I was to ask everyone here tonight, can you in 30 seconds tell me what is it your club coaching philosophy is? What are you about as coaches? What are you about as a club? What are you trying to achieve? If you can't answer that in 30 seconds, then you don't know it. If you don't know it, it leads to uncertainty. If you are uncertain, you're going to be inconsistent in your approach. If you're inconsistent, it leads to chaotic behavior. The point I'm making is maybe that could be, going back to our point here, assess where you are in the space. If you're not clear in your co op coaching philosophy, your values, and what you represent and what you're about as a group of coaches, as a club, then I think that needs to start first before you even go into the player pathway, before you even discuss what we want to do with players. I think you need to get clarity around that first. And that could take time. So that's the point I'm making. Every club is at a different stage of development and a different journey. When you get clarity around that, so we're here as a club, our aim as a group of coaches is to um, develop our in, increase participation, develop our players and improve performance and that our players love, uh, sustain a love for the game. That's club coaching philosophy. Our values are about you know, we're, we're inclusive, you know, we're um, player-centered, whatever it may be, okay? Now you've clarity around that. Okay, that's what we want to be. Now we know what we want to be. Now, how do we develop our players across each of the strands under the four pillars to be, to achieve that now? How do we achieve that, okay? And that's where then you start the conversation on the player pathway. Smaller groups, so I would say is you could start off very simply by putting the other sixes together, the other eight coaches together, the other 10 coaches together, or you might put the academy coaches together. You might put in the 14s and 16s together or on their own together, whatever way you want to work it. And just having a conversation around, okay, under these four pillars, how would we like to see our players do or develop under all those age groups? Now you have the competency chart there, but if you get that chart and plonk it into your club, I don't know when you get buy-in. The way you get buy-in is by going, okay, thanks for the guide. But if we were to ask you as a group of coaches, what would you like to achieve? Then jot it down. Come on, let's have a conversation about it. And let's agree what we feel would work under those four pillars. So you have that conversation. As a group, you agree what you want to achieve. I would write it down and document it. Okay? As agreed by the group. And this is what we did our own club. So I'm just going to give you the, the process that we did. When we all sat down, we had someone with a laptop. <laughs> someone with a laptop on the night. We put up the, 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 all the age groups, we put in the four pillars, and as the group gave feedback, we just typed in what they were saying. So these were documented as go along. And this could be a challenge because if you're not clear on your philosophy and your approach, then I think you could have a challenge here. But if you're clear on where you want to go as players or as a group, as a club, then you know, you'll have more clarity. So some coaches might feel, I, I underrate, 
I come here to make we our under sixes need to be preparing for matches. No, we don't. We don't need to be preparing for matches. We need to make sure they, they meet these competencies first before they start even thinking about matches. That's start a conversation. Okay. So that could be a challenge because there's going to be different opinions. But once you get a consensus, that's the key. And then you need to think about, right, now we've agreed this is a group, we bring it to our executive, the club executive, they're happy to ratify it, we're all good to go. Then how do we communicate that to our players, coaches, and volunteers? Do you keep it on your laptop? Or do you actually you know, jazz it up a small bit and get it out there and communicate to your players, communicate to your coaches, which are obviously involved in that process, and your volunteers, which might be your parents or wherever it may be. So you're communicating that. So get all... I think that's a that's a starting point, and that could take a bit of time. Everyone, this is not going to happen overnight. I think this is. If you want, I can share my own club pathway. It wasn't anything absolutely, you know, extravagant. We just had a laptop. We had the age groups on top. We had the four pillars. Every group discussed their area. We took feedback. We put it on a document. They all went home and read it. We came back. We looked at it again. We tweaked it. Okay, and then we we just agreed it as a group. I think it all. Is it that simple, really? But it does, it takes time to do that. I think. Yeah, it takes time. It takes personnel. I think that's, that's very important. Like this evening now, it's not just you. You are one person representing your club who is going to be doing this. It'll take the entire club. It'll take that community to buy in to make this work. But you can be the catalyst that starts that conversation now after this evening within your club. That's very important. In relation to the planning the how, the thing that sticks out to me a lot is kind of goal setting. We need those groups so you can set those goals. I, would, I always say set goals because you might say, okay, the chart says we only need to do this and to do this at under eights and times. You hit that and you're like, okay, perfect. The, the chart is just a guide. You can progress beyond what that age group is telling you to do. So what I would say recommend, instead of just going purely by the chart, you use that as a guide, but you set your own realistic goals. And I don't say reach for goals, I would say build towards goals. Because if you're reaching, you might forget something and leave something behind. So if you build towards something, then you know you're doing something good and you're on to the next step. And I think that's something we should all be cognizant of when we're planning our sessions, planning our philosophy. Very good, Gerard. Excellent points. So start the conversation. Let's go back to, let's, let's, let's think about, think about where you are personally. Get everyone together. Just assess where you are. Start the conversation. Maybe you need to get clarity around your coaching philosophy first and your values and your approach and what you're trying to achieve. When you have clarity around that, that'll help your conversation, the player pathway, to be a lot more easier or more, more focused. Put your into small groups, under 12 coaches together, 14 coaches together, have a chat. What is it you think we need to achieve on these four pillars? Have a chat about it. What do you think? And you know, use the, use the company chart as a guide. Get someone to document it. Let them go away and mull over it and read over it, come back and agree it. And then let's communicate it to people. That will take time. That won't happen overnight. That'll take time. Okay, now you've done that. You're going to deliver it. How are you going to deliver on your club uh, player pathway? So how you deliver is very simple. Is that when every coach is planning their sessions, they're constantly thinking of the four pillars that they'd agreed on, or that they chatted about. So when I'm planning my session for the under 12s, so for example, I was at the under 11s last year, and our club philosophy or our club goal was by the age of 12, we'll try and get players to be competent off both sides of the body, left and right, uh, kicking and hand pass. Right, okay. So when I'm planning my session, okay, I'm thinking about tactically, right, when I'm doing my technical skills, I'm going to make sure they work off both sides of the body. Tactically, okay, I'm going to use small sided games to make sure that we're using that space. Okay, very good. Tactically, it's okay. What I'm going to do physically is that I'm going to make sure we're going to do a movement station. So I'm going to do a movement station where they're turning off their left and their right, and I'm going to include a small bit of skill work in that. Okay, and then psychosocial, what I'll do is, do you know what? Uh, around half time of our, uh, during the breaks of the small sided games, I'm going to ask the players for their opinion and tell me, you know, how, they, how can we improve this drill? Or I might ask them, what do they take from the session and how can we improve the session? I might throw in a fun game, psychosocial. Okay, if I connect that player to player, I'll throw in a fun game. So I'll start in a fun game and I'll finish in a fun game. 
So now I'm thinking about the four pillars in my planning and making sure, and I always, when I plan, I put four boxes and I put the headings on top and I make sure that whatever I'm doing, I have a purpose in my training session. I want to develop this. And I just make sure that I'm touching those four boxes in terms of my planning. So therefore now I'm constantly having the player pathway to the forefront of my mind. Continue to reflect. So I would say after a while, you know, mid season or even at the end of the year, get all the coaches back in and say, well, how do we do against what we agreed at the start of the year in our player pathway? So the other six coaches, how do you get on? Ah, oh, geez, do you know that, that, that goal of your know, players kicking off their left, right on the six, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe we just bring that back a small bit. Maybe if we get them kicking off their left and right off the ground, they'd probably be more applicable. Okay, fair enough, we'll modify that. So continue reviewing what you're doing, what you're achieving and amending and keeping that clear pathway to the front of your, uh, of your, of your conversations. And progress it, their development based on the, on the player stage of development. So progress it, as Garoud outlined there, progress that plan based on their stage of development. So if you feel that the players can do more X, Y, and Z, 100% move on. This is just a guide for you in terms of how you go about your business as a coach, as a group of coaches, and as a club. Any more on that, uh, Garoud? Or is there anything coming through the chat that um, before we go into the last piece? No, but uh, it's also something, don't be aware, if they're not at that stage that is outlined as well, that don't worry about it, identify the stage they are at and build from there. Okay, so it's okay to be at any of those stages. We all develop differently at different rates, and it's good to recognize that instead of expecting your players to be at a certain level. Yeah. And you'll have these conversations like, oh my God, they should be getting ready for matches under sevens. No, but what we do agree is that they need to be aware of space uh, in small side, you know, in small side games. Do you know? So it's just really just you know, just tuning that what you, you're trying to achieve. Oh, we want to kick off our left and right at under sixes. Yeah, but not off the hands, maybe off the, off the ground. Maybe any confidence in kicking the ball, you know, and hitting targets, you know, uh, from the ground would be a starting step. So again, it's just having those conversations of that incremental development. Sometimes we think we're coaching adults at under eights. We're not. They're under eights. They're under eights. So therefore, they're technical, tactical, Physical and psychosocial competencies are a different stage of development to under 16. So therefore, we have to apply what are the basic things we want to cover in those areas if we want to develop our players incrementally. But if coaching units are doing things in isolation, then that's where the inconsistency comes across. But if we all know what we're trying to achieve, then now we all have a role to play in the development of our players as a group. And this does not happen overnight. It takes time. I think there's a very good comment as well that would spark uh, kind of, it'd be interesting actually to see what, in your own opinion, will, what if you can't get every pillar in one session? You can. <laughs> you can. Psychosocial. Okay, psychosocial. I'm going to say hi to everyone when they come in the gate. Everybody's going to give a high five, you know, after every activity that we do. Physical, they're running around. So if they're running around, they're, they're working on their physical aspect. The technical is skills and games and small side games. You will 100% be able... Now, yes, you might focus more on one aspect in a session tonight. Okay, tonight I'm going to work on a bit of physical fitness, but I'm definitely going to touch on the other three. So when I'm working on my physical fitness, okay, I'm going to put them into groups. They're going to be in groups. And they're going to be doing tough runs together, right? They're going to be in groups. They're going to encourage each other. I'm going to make sure to encourage each other. Now I'm the psychosocial working with the physical element, okay? All right. If you're doing the physical element, okay, you might do that through small side of games. So you might do 3v3 over 60 by 60 uh, area. Wow, that's working really hard in a, for 40 seconds in a 60 by 60, 3 by 3 try it. Now you're working physical, but also they're working technical ability in the game. So I'd be very surprised if you can't cover all four in a, in a session because it can be simply done in a seamless way. But there may be a time where you might focus on one more on a certain night because of maybe the stage of development, stage of the year, or whatever it may be, okay? So, but I definitely believe you should be touching every box in every training session. It can be achieved. I know it can. Uh, so go after that in terms of if you want to challenge yourself as a coach. I hope, Carol, that's not been um, 
What's your thoughts on that? Uh, would I be... Yeah, no, and I think that is it. I don't think we realise that we do hit more pillars than we realise. Exactly. And yes, of course, you're going to emphasise certain programmes at different age groups based on your previous session or based on games. Yes. So that's totally natural as well on top of everything else. Exactly. Okay, just a review of the player pathway. So it has to be front and foremost. So you need to review it with your group of coaches the key competencies for each pillar of the player pathway applicable to their age group based on your coaching experience. So the base, basically what that's saying is, okay, everyone, you all did great work this year. You know, from your experience, how do you think we're doing on our player pathway? You know, is this what we've agreed? Is it realistic? Do we need to modify? Do you need to change it? Okay, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, and someone might say, geez, you know what? In the lifestyle, I think we need to be bringing in a bit more information on nutrition at under 16 level. Okay, right, John, we put that in there, that understanding nutrition habits at under 16. So that comes into the lifestyle of the psychosocial. It might be, I've got one here. Um, it could be, uh, I'll just pick one. Uh, uh, look at the lifestyle balance. Okay, well, how do we manage, you know, educate our players on managing exams and, and, and physical activity and whatever it may be. Okay, we might interest, introduce that in under 14. So that's where your experience are coming in. You're going, maybe we should do a bit more here on that aspect, or maybe we should move that up to this. So you're constantly reviewing your player pathway. And then you're meant to ensure continuous improvements. So every time you meet, think about this, every time you meet, you, 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 you set a baseline with your player pathway. Every time you meet, you're actually continuing to improve. You're actually raising your standards. So the next time you meet, you're going to raise the standards. So that's now the new standard. So let's change and modify it. Then we go out and we try things and experience. Next time we meet, we're now raising the standard again. So you're always raising your standards every time you meet as a group of coaches. You mightn't realize it, but you are. So you can't see we're improving what you're trying to do. Carol, is there anything to say in that? Yeah, yeah, in relation to reviewing, you always ask the question, when should you review? Yeah. And who is reviewing? So I think there's three opportunities on these levels when you're uh, trying to review your player pathway. You can have a review between coaches after one session within one particular age group. Yeah. They can review their sessions, reflect. When are they reflecting? Is it during the week? Is it directly after the previous session? So they can better inform and plan for the next session. So that's one level. Then you can have reviewing maybe quarterly. So less regularly quarterly with just all your teams of coaches. So the eights, the tens, the twelves, the fourteens, the sixteens all meet quarterly, four times throughout the year, and they discuss that as well. So it's important that people and coaches understand what levels they're working with, what they're having trouble with, what the barriers that they might be having, or oh, we're not actually at this level yet. But it's so important to communicate that because you might get help from other coaches and things like that. And then the kind of less frequent one would be your annual review. And that could involve players, parents, coaches, other club members as well to over review that annually uh, at the end of each year. And if you want to go back to cultivating a coaches' community practice, so what Garo was talking there is where coaches come together to discuss coaching. Go look at that webinar. It really kind of gives you structure around how that looks like. The power of uh, you know coaches discussing coaching in your club can't be underestimated. So all we're saying, so please now, can you put any questions you have into the chat now? And we'll answer as many as we can before we finish up. Um, so if you have any questions or thoughts or you know anything coming to your head, put into chat now and we'll answer them before we finish up here this evening. But to wrap up really, the learning cycle, all we're, we're promoting tonight is to think and reflect on what we presented here tonight. Think and reflect on it, okay? And then just get a group of coaches together to, 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 to plan what is you're trying to achieve in terms of the player pathway. But the point I make it earlier on, you may have to have other conversations first before you even get there. So if you're not clear on your coaching philosophy or your values or your approach, okay, and go back to the previous webers, webinar on creating a positive coaching environment will help you with that. When you've that nailed, then you'll move on to the player pathway. That was my own experience anyway. That, from being a coaching officer. My own experience was we had to get clarity around our coaching philosophy first, our approach and our, and our values. And in that webinar, creating a positive coaching environment, we have a sample uh, coaching um, uh, guidelines that helped us. And then we moved on to the player pathway. And I think it was year two that we actually started talking about the player pathway. Okay, so we had to have all those conversations first. So plan, then do, deliver. Just 
try it out through your experiences, just try it out, see how you get on, and then just review it. And as I always say earlier on, the more you meet, think, plan, do, review, the more you're raising your standards, the more you're continuously improving. So hopefully that will, will help on that. So I suppose what we're trying to achieve here really is a shift from linear framework to more experience. So currently everyone here, guys, you're, you're educating yourselves to an LJFA uh, level one or level two or introduction coaching Gaelic games program. And that's your linear in terms of getting certified for that. But what we'd love for everybody here tonight is to start thinking about themselves and, and what can they do to develop their own their own selves as coaches, your own selves as clubs, and clubs taking more ownership for their learning. So even if you take this tonight and go back and start you know, thinking about this and gathering as coaches and having conversations around these things, then you're, you're taking ownership of your own learning. And I think that's really, really powerful. So coaches stay involved in coach education relative to their own needs and context. So you're going to have conversations in your club that's relative to your needs and your context. Having the player pathway front and foremost to those conversations will really help and guide you. Okay, and hopefully, hopefully we gave you a nice whistle top in terms of how you achieve that tonight. Okay, so Garo, if there's anything coming through the chat, um, we, we, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But um, I hope that was beneficial tonight to people. But if they want um, any questions or queries, please. Uh, there's yeah two came in now and are kind of related to a similar thing it's issues are kind of trouble each year with um girls playing uh, at older age groups parents wanting their girls to play with this perceived stronger team instead of their own age group and things like that how would you deal with something like yeah, that yeah so if you go back I, I'll, I'll answer it now but if you go back to the creating a, a club coaching environment one uh, we have a good conversation around that but it goes back to what, if you want to develop your players, every club is in a different stage of development, okay? If you want to improve and develop your players, well, what does that look like in your club? So you need to have a conversation as coaches about that. It's not the parents' opinion that Matt, you know, it's about the club. It's a club that governs the coaches. It's a club that governs the coaching structure. So what is it that you're trying to achieve? So if you're clear in your coaching philosophy, then that will help in terms of your approach, then that will help with the decision. For example, if you have enough players, I'll give an example. So your coaching philosophy is to in, uh, increase participation, develop your players, and increase performance, right? Your values are inclusivity, fairness, you know, uh, inclusiveness, and whatever it may be. Your approach to meet that in this instance could be, if we have enough players at a certain age group, then we don't go near the players who are of the lower age group. Simple as. That's where green is coaches. If we have enough players of a certain age group, then we go, don't go near the players of the younger age group. And we're all agreeing as coaches. Number two, if we don't have enough players, then yes, we will bring up X amount of players from the younger age group, but the players of the age will be given priority in terms of game time. I'm just throwing out there. Now, you might disagree. Everybody has their own conversations in their clubs about that. Okay, that's what we're agreeing now as a club. So if we want to improve and develop our players, this is how we work. If we're bringing up players, you could do two way, it could be the same players, or do you know what? We're, if we want to improve and develop all players, then we won't bring up the same three players all the time. So we rotate it. So today it's Mary, Joan, and Sheila. Next week it's Michelle, um, Veronica, and, um, and Mary, whoever it may be. Okay. So that's the conversation you need to have. Then you need to communicate this. Well, who makes that decision? Number one. The two coaches need to have this conversation around us and agree in these conversations. If we want to develop players, then the two coaches need to have a chat about how that works. And the club, all the coaches together, we're going to agree. So this is happening. This scenario happens. This is how we're going to do it. Two coaches have an agreement and have a chat. Then we link it with the parents to see are they okay with it. And then we'll, we'll ask the players, are they okay with it? Because think about this, everyone. Maybe the player coming up, okay, she may be very, very good, technically very good. Physically very good, okay? Tactically very good. But psychosocially, mightn't be ready for that. She might be ready to move into that older dress room. She might have the, the maturity, the emotional um, uh, competency to be ready for that. So we sometimes take things for granted. So we have to engage the key stakeholders. So a lot of decisions help with that. But the point I'm making is if you're clear in your philosophy and your values and your approach, then you'd have clarity around how that works. If we bring up a player, Okay, if we have enough players, we don't need to bring up other players. If we need players, we're going to bring up two or three. They might be the same players, or we rotate them. Who makes that decision? 
two coaches agree, chat to the parents, in, engage the players. So now there's a nice system there because too often in clubs, it's done in isolation. Mikey or Mary, who's over in the 16s, will take Sheila up from the 14s, won't even talk to the 14 coach, might even engage with the parents. And you know, I'm bringing her up now because we begin the next week and I've seen it happen in clubs. Okay, so that communication, if you engage on a regular basis, you have good conversations around those. I hope that helps. But if you go back to the creating a, uh, um, a positive coaching environment, I actually have a sample coaching guidelines that just to show what we do in that situation in our own club. If you want to email me in the morning, I send them on to you. And we have specific guidelines around players playing up and down age groups. We agree that coaches. Uh, we, so therefore, we if we're doing this, this is how we're going to go about it. And it just it minimizes uncertainty, it minimizes inconsistency, and it certainly minimizes chaotic behavior. If that makes sense. Is we, thanks, so? uh, yeah, a few more. Just uh, Suzanne, happy to see people talking about the underage population as uh, most talks relate to older players. It's critical to give the young children who are beginning their journey a positive and fun experience. And I think that's a fantastic comment as well. But and you can't people, emphasize it enough fun. Or can, they need to enjoy it, but everybody here needs to understand that every player develops at different stages. So you might have early matures and late matures. So if we start developing all our players at all stages, at all times, then you're giving them the opportunity to be the best they can be when they're ready, okay? So you might have a girl at under 12, 13, okay? But she might have gone through her growth spurt. She might be awkward and, you know, find it hard to, to play the game or be maybe a bit off in her technical ability. But in three years' time, when she goes through her growth spurt, she could be a totally different player altogether. So we have to build all this into our, that we're developing all players to be the best they can be Right through, right throughout their process, so that they will come and they'll flourish at different stages. And sometimes we probably dismiss players too early because we're going after a certain type of player. But if we develop everyone, then you never know in two or three years' time. I've seen myself here in my own club. I've seen players who've been on the B team at under twelve and are the leaders in under fifteen because they've gone through that growth spurt. You know, they've got rid of that awkwardness and now they're they're more fluid in their in their movement. And as a result, they're more technically proficient. And as a result, they're different players. So I just think this player pathway kind of makes sure that everybody stays involved and that we're developing everybody at the at the right rate too, at the right stage of development. Yeah. Are there skill assessment cards available for the F1, 2, and 3 sections? Um, we have skills. We have we have skilled cards. They're on our LJFA. They're on our LJFA website. But if anybody would like to see any kind of skills assessments or anything like that for the various age groups, I would, again, it would have came to our own conversations in our club that we said we'd like to kind of you know I suppose measure improvement, uh, evidence of measure improvement. So if anybody, want, I can show you one or two skills. Um, testing that we did for the various age groups all the way down, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, but yeah, there's skill cards on the LGFA website. Please give a look at them. And there's a, few, a bit of guidance around that as well. But if you want, just come direct to myself or yourself, Garod, we'd be happy to support you on that if you want any examples. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, would it be helpful for coaches to sit in with other age groups during the year from time to time? Or would this be unhelpful as they may not be relevant to their particular coaching group? Very good. I, I think coach conversations need to be relative to their own needs and context. They're the most powerful ones. But I would advocate, I would advocate a mix and match every now and then because you go back to the point I'm making about what we're trying to achieve in clubs, that they can take more ownership of the learning. There's great knowledge and experience in clubs. So there's, it's great to hear from the under 16 coach who might have a bit more knowledge and experience than the coach under 10 and give advice and share. So I would advocate that you had those conversations with your own age groups or uh, own groups because it's within your context and your needs, where I would advocate maybe two times a year, the whole group getting together and having those conversations because you'll always learn from other coaches in your, in your codes and in the club. And I don't think we're doing that enough in clubs. Yeah, and I think that's another good point in relation to how you can use the guide as well to uh, kind of avoid regression as well. What if a coach leaves? Oh, we don't know what we're doing, but this pathway that you've already put in place will help you slot another coach into those positions and they can pick up where the previous coach exactly. left it's off. It's continuous, it's continuous. As well, it's absolutely. So communication is always fantastic, but you, it's not always essential out, in, outside of those age groups as yeah. well. Yeah. 
There's no. There's um, no I know there's a lot of people asking about referencing of coaching a, a webinars that have previously been done. I know Will has referenced them numerous throughout this evening. So we would say if you're unsure, try, go straight onto the LGFA YouTube coaching channel, and they will all be there. And um, if anyone wants to stay on after this evening, we can see if we can link in with uh, some of those previous or webinars. Or just send an email to ourselves, guys, and we'll, we'll send you the links for all those webinars because all those webinars all contribute to these discussions. This is only one part of a bigger discussion that you need to have in your club. And um, this is just one specific part. So we kept it very simple tonight and very specific to the player pathway. But look, Garrod, I think that's it. Um, I, we hope that you enjoyed tonight. Please, guys, before you go in the chat function, do you enjoy the session? And also, what did you take from the session? Please let us know what you take from the session. Our next webinar is on the unconscious bias, and we have Dr. Irene Hogan with us on the night. Uh, I think it's the 2nd of March. The um, link to sign up for that webinar is on the LGFA uh, website. But if you need general thoughts on our webinars or any advice or, or feedback, please don't be afraid to make contact with us. We're always trying to improve ourselves and what we're trying to achieve. So we hope you enjoyed tonight. Uh, the Gaelic Games Player Pathway, we hope you gave you some simple tips and ideas and how you could probably move this forward or even continue to inform what you're doing in your clubs because everybody's doing great work and I think that's important to be acknowledged. So, Gerard, I would say thank you very much to yourself for your help tonight. Um, really enjoyed uh, the interaction and the chat. and the, So, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if there's one thing you'd advise clubs, what would it be? You're on mute there. Talk, I would say. Don't presume, don't, it is lovely to have these things put up in your halls, in your clubhouses, things like that. How now, just ask yourself that one question, how are you going to try to start implementing that in your club? And all I would say is simple answer, start having those conversations. So on that note, guys, everyone, thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you hopefully over, over the coming weeks with our next webinars. If not, the very best look in your training sessions, the very best look is a club and a group of coaches and what you're trying to achieve. And hopefully we'll see you soon. So thank you very much for your time.